I was out to dinner last night with a good friend, uh, and she asked me, in the way that a good friend who is not a Christian asks a good friend who is a pastor, she said, what is it that you are preaching on tomorrow? And I said, I stopped for a moment, and I thought over it, and I said, well, I'm preaching my latest in a sermon series of Jesus' worst hits. These are things that Jesus said in the scriptures, and especially in apparently the, the teens of Luke's gospel, parables and messages of Jesus that are tough. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but for the last few weeks it's kind of been, and this is the parable of the dishonest manager, and I don't know what to do with it. Or this is Jesus' is teaching about money, and it's really a hard message. And I said, I sat down to look at this text this week, and it's another one of those texts, another one of those parables that Jesus gives to us that's just rough, difficult to understand, or, in this particular case, very easy to understand and a difficult word to hear and listen to. I often get a piece of feedback that amuses me very much uh, about my preaching. I have had people on multiple occasions say to me, that sermon that you preached this Sunday, that was about me, wasn't it? You were preaching directly to me. And by and large, the answer is no. I'll be straight with you. I, I try very hard to avoid preaching directly at people. It's a little problematic. feels like a bully pulpit. The amazing thing about preaching is that somewhere between the end of my lips and the beginning of your ears, the Holy Spirit takes the word that I preach to you and transforms it. My mom talks about this constantly, that what she thinks she preaches is not necessarily what people hear in the congregation, and that that's a good thing. That God knows the word that you need to hear and slips it in among the things that I think that I'm saying. But today, more than usual, our lectionary text is pointed at me. And the sermon today, more than usual, is pointed at me. This is a, another secret that they don't tell you about preaching when I point out into the congregation to tell you all something that y'all ought to be doing, three of the fingers of my hand are pointing back at me. Many sermons that I preach, I know the places that they speak to me, and I'm going to be a little more open about that this week than usual, because it really landed, reading the Gospel text this week. The Gospel te text speaks to my experience and the brokenness of my own attitude. It's a pretty common social indicator, a way that we are humans together. When you're done a favor, you thank someone. When you do a favor, you expect to receive thanks. This is a natural, human, and very American way of interacting with one another. I've spent much of the last week thanking people for various things that they've done related to the enormously amazing day that I'm having today. Thank you, I have said. Thank you for working on the bulletin, Janet. I really appreciate it. Mary Lee, thank you for being so flexible with the music. Annie, thank you so much for checking in on all the moving pieces. Thank you all for all the work that you have done. But thanks and commendation and gratitude these are not the reason that I am, or more to the point, not the reason that I should be doing this job. If I got into the pastorate because I wanted to hear the gratitude of grateful people, I went into the wrong career. I should have been a baseball player. Nor is the reason that I should be doing this job the paycheck. See also, baseball player. I do not do this job for the money. That I can say more definitively. I don't do this job for the money. I'm grateful for the money. Thank you very much. It enables me to live. It enables me to get by. But that's not why I'm up here. It's not the thanks or the gratitude or the commendation. It's not the paycheck. It's not the power or the respect. If I do this job to earn any of those things, then I am doing the job wrong. From the get-go. I'm doomed before I start. And I'll cop to it. Lately, 
Over the last several months, I've been buying into that culture. The culture that says, I did a thing for you. Where's the gratitude? I do stuff. Make visits. I go out and send emails or make phone calls. I do it for what it gives to me. But it's not right. It's not the reason that I should be serving. When I think that way, when I act that way, I'm doing it wrong. And it's tough. It is tough to break out of this cultural attitude because it is so essential to our economy and to our political system and to the way that we think about the world. If we were to entirely cast aside the fee-for-service model, American society would collapse overnight. But it's right for us, at least in the church, to break out of this attitude that says that we are entitled to or deserving of respect or attention or thanks for the things that we do for God. And the core reason, the heart and soul of why that is, is because God did all of the things that God did because God wanted to and not for us. The creation, the incarnation, the crucifixion, the resurrection, these were not stunts, not dramatic gestures on God's part to try and persuade us to love. God gave Christ to us freely, totally freely, completely freely, no strings attached. And God offered us the chance to become servants. To serve the ultimate God. To serve the creator and lover of the universe. God shares with us today body and blood of his only begotten son freely. No strings attached. No expectations. God sets no preconditions on the openness of God's table. But if we're going to buy into that, if we are going to be what God has offered us the chance to be in relationship, then we have to serve God as servants. And frankly, because I think servants is a wishy-washy, modernist interpretation of that word, as slaves. Slaves to the gospel. Slaves to Christ. Slaves to God's love and work in the world. Slaves are not paid for their work. Slaves are owned entirely by the thing to which they are enslaved. And I will stand here and say over and over again, I am a slave to Christ Jesus. I am a slave to the gospel. I expect nothing. Nothing in return for my service. Not as a requirement. Not as a commandment from on high but because I want to. I want to devote myself and my life to Christ Jesus and His work in the world. On my good days, when my head is on straight, I want to be a slave. I want to give and live so God can use me anywhere, anytime, out of love. And that's a hard row to hoe. This is a tough word, as has been par for the course for the last few weeks, from Jesus. But are we willing to take that plunge? Are we willing to dive into true service with no expectation of return, not for glory or for gratitude or for thanksgiving, but for Christ, who has given everything, even unto death, to us freely. I've been falling down on this. And I'm striving to reclaim the glory of the service of God. I will confess, I have been falling down on this point. And that's why today I felt like the Gospel text is pointed straight at me. You 
Matt Johnstone, said the Lord. Get your act together. And so my pledge to you in response to the call of God is that I will strive to model this kind of service. A service that wants no gratefulness. A service that needs no thanks, no cards. A service that seeks to serve you in love. But always seeking, always striving, always know, wishing to know the will and work of God in this community. Amen. Our hymn of response is number 477. Ye servants of God, your master proclaim.